This is Twit. Government. Government. There's a lot going on in the government. Let's start with Kathy's article. Ten, the top ten, a listicle. I didn't Kathy. write that. It's just a tech it's a, article. It's a listicle. Oh, you didn't write it. It's from tech. I dirt. didn't write it. Uh, yeah. Baron yeah. Soka, Shoka and uh, Ari Cohn wrote this. The yeah. top ten mistakes senators made during the Earn It markup. That was. Uh, Which is to say, there were more than ten. There were more. This These is, are the top yeah. ten. This was last week. Uh, <laughs> Earn It is that awful bill we thought we had killed. It's it's back. Nope. It's back, baby. Uh, the Judiciary Committee approved it unanimously, sent it to the Senate floor. I'm not sure when it will be brought up for a vote. Um, here are the top 10 legal and technical mistakes the committee made today. Number one, encryption is not threatened by this bill, says Dick Blumenthal. He always says that. <laughs> he always says it. This doesn't, this doesn't oh, and uh, just so we know, I know that experts tried to talk to him and tell him how it was going to affect encryption and he didn't he did not want to be informed listen. what no. was his response i don't tell me nah, 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 i got my fingers nah, 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 nah. or he just um, doesn't belong, he doesn't believe it i i'm there was ostriching that basically occurred when expertise was provided to him <laughs> ostriching i like that that's yeah. a I like good, the verb yes a good new verb ostriching um <laughs> Uh, Patrick Leahy did propose an amendment uh, aimed at preserving companies' ability to offer secure encryption say, by providing that a company could not be found in violation of the law because it utilized secure encryption, uh, or if it fails uh, or fails to undermine the security of their encryption. In other words, no backdoor. Uh, but there is new language in the Earn It 2022 version that basically. Uh, undermines that those activities cannot be an independent basis of liability, but the courts can consider them as evidence. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> You're not liable, but we don't like it, and uh, we can consider it as evidence. So, mistake two: the bill's sponsors readily conceded that Earn It would coerce monitoring for CSAM child uh, sexual abuse material. That's, by the way, the red herring that this is all based yes. on is that this yes. is somehow going to make it harder uh, for uh, child pornographers and of course it's not in fact it's quite the opposite and that's the that's what we learned with FOSTA SESTA is that actually just pushed them underground they were it, it made it harder to prosecute them not easier uh, and I'm sure this will have the same effect uh, meanwhile compromising our everybody else's security um the Leahy Amendment alone won't protect privacy and security or avoid triggering the Fourth Amendment. This is all this is all pretty technical. Kathy, can you can you s summarize what's wrong with Earn It? Uh, everything. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Perfect job. Yeah. Yeah, well done. Good Bravo. That's, that's, that's all we need to know. <laughs> but uh, I will follow up with a few broad strokes. Um, it, part of this is uh, this pretense that. Um, I think a number of members of Congress sincerely believe incorrectly, which is that Section 230 protections are some sort of benefit, some sort of subsidy that platforms get, and that if they're not going to be perfect enough for us, we should take them away, send them to a timeout, no dessert with your dinner, no Section 230 for you. That's not the way that Section 230 is constructed at all. It isn't a particular privilege or benefit or subsidy. It's a essentially procedural law that makes the operation of the First Amendment meaningful when it comes to platform facilitated internet speech, aka all internet speech. It means that we can have it and we can have services of any size, any any scope, any focus point, they can exist. Um, and so this idea that like, well, if they're not, if these platforms aren't perfect enough, we will take away their privilege. This is a bad one. Look at it in the title, earn it. You want to get this benefit? Well, you better do exactly what we say. And that's just flawed from the outset. And you jeopardize all Internet communication, essentially, like with what happened to FOSTA, when um, when you take that away or make it conditional in some way. It stops being useful. And, and the platforms we depend on to facilitate all of our online ideas and transactions can't exist. So that's a fundamental broad stroke mistake of earn it and basically all of the reform repeal 230 laws that they keep proposing it's really predicated on this false notion that it's a special benefit that we're giving out 
Um, then this one also became like this Voltron of terrible with um, tying in encryption, where in your ability to offer encryption was also sort of a privileged thing that you got to do. And the way that this all works functionally means that nobody can give uh, can provide encrypted communications because to do so essentially puts them in jeopardy. And that's where the technical arguments get into. But Congress saying, no, 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 it won't when other expert observers are saying, yes, 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 it will. The yes people are correct. And um, it's just not a good thing to blunder into. We need encryption. We need it for cybersecurity. We need it for foreign policy, like dissidents who would like to resist attack mm -hmm. by totalitarians and such like this is a really terrible time in history to take all that away um and that's what bills like this do and the people pushing it just don't they're ostriching they don't want to hear that there's these flaws um and it's really unfortunate and they're hiding behind you know terrible content that yes does need to be addressed but the thing that you might want to do if you want to go after csam first of all is how about providing resources to prosecuting it and like that's low-hanging fruit but this bill isn't about going after the low-hanging fruit. This is about pulling down the whole house of cards that the internet depends on. So why are they doing this? What is, is it, uh, is it to look Something good? Something must be done. There's a lot of that. Um, there's a lot of that. I mean, there's some general, that that's the impetus for a lot of Section 230 ref, uh, reform. I don't even like using that word because it's you. garbage. The idea that it needs reform or can be reformed without being obliterated is false. But the push to change Section 230 in any particular way is there is some legitimate political pressure because people are bothered by bad things that happened on the Internet and would like their politicians to do something about the bad things on the Internet. And there is legitimate political pressure that many in Congress are responding to to do something about the bad things on the Internet. And at the moment, the only thing that seems accessible to them is to take down Section 230. Um, so that I understand. But some of them are they don't get it. They think there's political points to be had in taking down big tech and they really don't let's go with that ostriching term. Like they don't want to know how anything works. They don't want to be told no. They just want to forge ahead and score the political victory without ever bothering to understand what's at stake. And, you know, it's not about good policy. It's about like winning. And that's, nobody's going to win if these things, you know, get through. Is Schumer going to take it to a vote? I don't know. The Senate is such a complicated place right now. And like there's gridlock and people are out with COVID and, there's other people still not behaving well and selling mugs about January 6th riots. So uh, there's a whole bunch of balls in motion. And maybe some of this is grist in the mill, but um, we can't like, sit, you know, we can't be complacent about it. Each of these bills that have emerged um, present real dangers to the Internet as we have it with like it to be, yep. et cetera, and and other communications and the ability to communicate and the ability to communicate in an unsurveilled way. This is all bad stuff. So whether it's grist in the mill or a real effort, we have to treat it as real. And this is a threat. And the politicians need to understand there would be a political cost if they push it.